In an earlier video, we looked at the expected value for a binomial random variable, and we showed that in that particular case, its expected value was n times t. And now we're going to talk about why this is true in general. So if x is a random variable with a binomial distribution with n trials and probability of success t, then the expected value of x is going to be n times t. All right, so for the proof of proof of this, we're going to start off with just the de definition of expected value and then just use some um, rewriting of this sum in order to end up with the expected value of x equaling nt. All right, so if we start off at the very beginning just with the definition of expected value. So we have k times the PMF evaluated at k for k equals values 0 to n. So again, we have n trials, so we could have zero successes, one success, all the way up to n successes. So that's why this sum goes from zero to n. All right, let's write in what the PMF for a binomial looks like. It's n choose k times p to the k times the probability of failure to the number of failures n minus k. Okay, let's rewrite this n choose k in terms of factorials. So n choose k is n factorial divided by k factorial times n minus k factorial. Now we're going to do a little bit of canceling. So first thing, notice that k factorial is equal to k times k minus 1 times k minus 2 all the way down to 1. So in other words, k factorial equals k times k minus 1 factorial. So this is useful because we have a k up in the numerator and now we know we essentially have a k in the denominator, so we're going to cancel those two. That will give us, um, the top part here is going to stay the same, and we're just going to cancel out these k's. So we'll have n factorial divided by k minus 1 factorial times n minus k factorial times p to the k times 1 minus p to the n minus k. And again, we're summing from n equals um, k equals 0 to n. Okay, so now we're going to continue writing it up here. First thing to notice is when we have k equals 0, um, we will end up with the first term of this sum being 0. So we can actually rewrite it as we can actually rewrite it as um, n factorial times k minus 1 factorial, sorry, divided by k minus 1 factorial and n minus k factorial times p to the k times 1 minus p to the n minus k. And now we're going to sum from k equals 1 to n. Okay, what we're going to do now is pull out an n and a p. So we're going to pull out 1n and make this into n times n minus 1 factorial. And then, of course, if we want to split this p to the k up, p to the k is equal to p times p to the k minus 1. So we're going to rewrite p to the k as p times p to the k minus 1, and we're going to rewrite n factorial as n times n minus 1 factorial. So we do that, and we pull it outside of the sum, which is fair because n and p don't have anything that depends on k. So we have the expected value of x is equal to n times p times the sum from k equals 1 to n, n minus 1 factorial, because of this, divided by k minus 1 factorial and n minus k factorial, and then p to the k minus 1, because we split p to the k up, and then 1 minus p to the n minus k. Okay, so if we look at this piece right here, we see that it looks like n minus 1 choose k minus 1. So let's rewrite this as n minus 1 choose k minus 1. And this part over here is going to stay the same. Now what we're going to do is change the indexing a little bit. So in, uh, in rather than going from k equals 1 to n, we're going to switch to j equals k minus 1. So if k went from 1 to n, then j is going to go from 0 to n minus 1. So anywhere all through here, Anytime we see a k minus 1, we're going to replace it with a j. 
So n choose n minus one choose k minus one turns into n minus one choose j. P to the k minus one turns into p to the j. One minus p to the n minus k is going to be replaced with n minus one minus p to the n minus j minus one. And then uh, the indexing j equals zero to n minus one. All right, so next thing we're going to do is swap out the n minus ones and put in m instead. So we're setting m equals n minus one. So in other words, anywhere we see n minus one in here, we're going to replace it with an m. So our sum goes up to n minus one. So if we rewrite it, our sum is going to go up to m. And here we have n minus one choose j. So we'll replace that with m choose j. And then we have p to the j, that's going to remain unchanged. Up here we see we have n minus 1 minus j, so we're going to replace that with m minus j. Now, if we look at this, we see that this is the PMF, or a binomial distribution with m trials and probability of success p. So what that means is that we're adding up over our entire PMF for that binomial. And of course, we know that when we add up all the values of our PMF, then we get 1. So this sum is equal to 1, which means that our expected value of x is equal to n minus, sorry, n times p. So we've proven what we needed to prove. We started off with a binomial distribution with n trials, and p um, is the probability of success. And we showed that the expected value of this random variable is n times p.